Hi, my name is Willex, and this is episode 14 of Age Eng Engineering. Today, I'm going to go over the nuclear reactors I made, how I'm making iridium. We're also going to cover off a few other things I made for my base, like a void or minor tier 2, and a um, solar tier 2. And uh, a few other odds and ends of comments and things that people talked about and alternate ways of doing things that uh, I hadn't thought of. But let's get on to the nuclear reactor right away. So I take no credit for this thing. Uh, I found it in a post from about a year ago on Reddit. Uh, it was for Infinity Involved, but it worked just fine for this pack. It puts out 420 EU per tick, and my core temperature is zero. So it's stable, it's safe, so long as you put all the components in the right places. So what are the components? Well, the fuel rods are all quad fuel rods. They're all the same type. We'll go over why that's important in a second. Um, I'm using component heat vents in it, overclocked heat vents, one component heat exchanger. There's only one of those in here. And some uh, containment reactor plating. It's sort of more of a placeholder and doesn't blow up quite as bad when you got some of that in there. Um, but the key point was you can't do much better than about 420 for uh, a nice safe reactor like this. And I guess that sort of covers the internal on this. I'll include a link in the description of this video if you want to see the post. He goes into more detail. Each of the components, while there's lots of um, subparts of subparts of subparts, it's all fairly straightforward in NEI to figure out how to make these things. Um, I'm going to have them auto-refilled from here, so I've got a whole bunch of quad fuel rods in there. Notice I've come up with lots of uranium since last episode. I'll go over why. And it's going to be pulled out of here and pushed into here. The oil, But first, the expired fuel rods will be pushed into this. I haven't set it up because it hasn't been through one full cycle yet, and I don't have empty ones to set the filter but I will. Um, and then there's just some uh, cabling ru running all the way up to uh, my base. It's about uh, 20 below my base. I know it looks like it's light right there, but no, it's much higher up than that. And I, the whole room is encased in um, fused quartz. It has the same blast resistance as uh, reinforced obsidian which is one of the best. This is just cheaper to make. Each of them has a lever so I can turn it on and off to work on it, that sort of thing. I do not have my uh, rubber suit on right now. So it's safe down here. Okay, let's go back up top. Alright. So that cable there comes out right there and this is how I'm making the fuel rods it actually starts over here uranium gets put into this drawer then there's a um, item conduit running underneath the stone here coming up there putting it into the macerator which macerates the ore it has plenty of speed it has no trouble keeping up then the uh, ore washing plant if anything in this chain is the bottleneck, this is it. Now it's fast enough, obviously it made it through the whole backlog, and uh, it's faster than I'm bringing in uranium. So that's fast enough. It's got an ejector upgrade, four overclocker upgrades, and an energy storage upgrade. Um, if I put more overclocker upgrades in it, it won't go any faster, it'll just run out of power. So if I wanted to go any faster, I'd have to upgrade the tier of power 
and but it's just not necessary because I don't have enough uranium to worry about it and it uh, auto ejects into this storage drawer here and it's auto ejecting tiny piles tiny piles of lead dust purified crushed uranium ore and or stone dust then this cable is set or the conduit pulls the purified crushed uranium out and sticks it in here this thermal centrifuge turns it in does the next step four speed upgrades is plenty overclocker upgrades and it's got an injector upgrade on it so it does not pull out and that goes in here I'm getting tiny piles of uranium and uranium 238 I'm getting far more uranium 238 than I am of the tiny so I gotta clean it out once in a while or the whole thing fills up but it makes the rich uranium the fuel rods are not being made in here I'm making them separately I think I've gone through one full row of these and I'm starting on the second row and then it gets pulled out of here as the enriched uranium and the fuel rods they get pushed in here so the enriched uranium goes in there becomes the ur full uranium which then gets pulled out and put into here and it turns it into quads when it combines it with some iron plates and some copper plates again I'm just putting the copper and the iron in here it's not automatic it's weird the way it draws things okay and then the uh, quads are being placed in here and that you saw the equivalent down below I could have run an item condiment down below but I wanted to poke as few holes in the fused quartz as I could now the wiring and how all this works let's show you some of that uh, I should have left it open okay so this cable comes up here and it goes into an MV transformer first that MV transformer is also feeding a low voltage transformer okay and then the low voltage lines come out of there and run by so the only thing the MV's uh, powering is the thermal centrifuge and it's sitting on it directly so I didn't need a cable this thing's powering all the uh, low, low voltage machines um, notice that I didn't want these two cables to join so I painted them let me show you how we do that you can make these little paint rollers and do I have some cable lying around yeah I do so let's say we put down and I didn't want it to join like that so I could mark one with blue and one with yellow now the two will join to black but they won't join with each other when they're different colors and that's how I avoided having uh, those two cables join and blow up all my machines right okay anything else to show you down here on this no I think that's it that one little cobbles bothering me and then these machines here are all getting the high voltage lines how does the voltage work on this because the nuclear reactor can't put out any more than um, 512 it's high voltage not ultra high from it right I don't know how that works exactly but it seems to be pretty safe 
Oh, I did manage to blow up this recycler once. I moved it. It was further over here. I had a tank or something in between these two. I was dreaming if I ever thought I was going to get enough UU matter to need a tank. But um, when I moved it, before I put the transformer upgrades, notice it's got two of them in. This is a low voltage machine. And it's got two transformer upgrades. So as I placed it down, it blew up instantly. So <laughs> I had to. Next time I had to remove the cable first, put the transformer upgrades in, then attach the cable. And it's got 12 overclocker upgrades and an energy storage upgrade. I had to put the higher power in, or I, I couldn't put that many overclocker upgrades in it. And because it's got so it's go doing through so much so fast, I've actually got two of the emerald cobblestone generators, and I even had to put a bunch of uh, item conduit uh, speed upgrades in there to uh, manage to keep this thing full of cobble. Um, and twelve was fast enough to keep this thing full of scrap. And it's got a pulling upgrade to pull from here. And a fluid ejector upgrade. So it's taking the scrap, turning it into UU matter, and feeding it in here. I've got a little over half a bucket so far. But this got upgraded. It only had one of these cobble gens. But once these things finish processing all the uranium, I got a lot more power, like a whole another reactor's worth, to feed into this, and it started going a lot quicker. Um, this replicator was the interesting thing to craft. We'll get into why in a sec. Then the scanner, you put whatever you want to be scanned. I'll do that in a future episode. And you put it onto a disk and go from there. Here is the uh, main point of all this. This is transforming uh, iron into iridium ore. You can see the power it's taking in. So it's taking at least one full reactor's worth. Question. If I fed four cables into a high voltage and stepped it up. Could this thing take more power then? Or is it getting as much power as it can right now? I don't know the answer to that. But I want both UU matter and this, so I'm fine with it sort of separating it out the way it is. I know that the, uh, uh, is it the mass fab? Yeah. The mass fab can take it from as much, let's call it current, as you want, just so long as the packets aren't any bigger than 512. So if I had 100 uh, reactors downstairs, it would get really, really fast but I've only got four. Only, I say, four. Lots of people try to get by with one smaller than what I have. Okay, so the thing that was interesting about the replicator is it needs reinforced stone. Now, let's look up the replicator. I'll show you what I'm talking about. And this is the one that might have... Uh, the rest of this is straightforward crafting stuff. You can figure it out from any eye. But you click on Reinforced Stone, nothing comes... So, how do you make Reinforced Stone? Well, let's get, get some of that. Oh, and I'll grab this as well. Okay, so we come over here. Oh, let's make sure this is turned off. I meant to turn it off before the ep No, I haven't. There. Because I only want one full tank of water. I don't want it auto-feeding in more. 
Okay, so we put that there, and we put, it'll take eight. Whoops, not nine, eight. Don't know why I've got an odd number that. We put the eight in there, and it's going to turn it into the construction foam. This is the CF powder. CF powder is stone, clay, and sand. Okay, then what you do with it is you put that stuff into a CF sprayer and we'll put down, you need two harden for the recipe. Put this foam in here and boom. And if you want uh, to go fast, just use a couple of sand. This stuff takes forever to break. It's like obsidian. Inconveniently, I've got a fortune pick, not a speed enhance pick. But that's how you make the reinforced stone you need for that recipe. I thought I'd better show you that one because it isn't obvious through any eye. Well, that's almost done. Oh! Something else I'm going to need is we'll make a new CF sprayer for you. Because it doesn't seem to want to go in. Uh, into my old one, at least when I tried before. So then when you take the CF sprayer, this is the empty one. Oh, I've got to change this. Oh, first off, switch tanks. That's why we couldn't put more water in. The construction foam's over here. And I don't think that's the right setting. No. There, that's it. It's this one. So it goes through its thing, and that's how you fill up the uh, thing with construction foam. Was that the... I don't remember what... Uh, no, that was... Was it this one? Probably. Um, let me show you what I was doing with that. Okay. I was taking... This is um, lapis dust, so I put it in... Uh, I just crushed it up. Then what happens is this gets turned into, what is it called again? IC2 coolant. Then you take the IC2 coolant, put some tin plates around it, and you get the 10K coolant cell. I thought I had to make 10,000 of these things, and I was going, oh my god, no. But no, um, it makes one 10K with one fluid cell. And you put three of those in here with some insulated cable and that and you get your overclocker upgrades. Again, that wasn't obvious through NEI so I thought I'd better show you that one as well. Let's get rid of this stuff. Okay. Oh, I don't like the paintbrushes either. Let's go over here next. So I built myself a machine that was drawing all sorts of power, a void miner tier two. So I upgraded this to 10 of these oil generators and it was going along quite nicely. I, well, I actually, I apologize last time when I started getting mad at ender pulsers. It was just me messing up and not getting them right. When I put them, at the correct speed, which turned out to be uh, 60 ticks each. Uh, if they were either too fast or too slow, they didn't work properly. 
Um, now there's probably some give there, but if I set them really, really fast, they don't work. If I set them really, really slow, they don't work properly either. But this would mean that um, if for some reason, let's say I picked up the uh, seeds as they were dropping in, it will try again to prep, send seeds out because it'll still be set to give the signal. Or down here, if it stopped because these things were full with uh, the empowered canola, I need the pulsar to keep trying to take it out. That's what they were there for, fault tolerance. But I don't need to worry, this thing's staying full all the time now. Uh, my new power gen is uh, producing 4,000 RF per tick. I'm only using about two. All right, so let's go over here and see what things we did. So I built a tier two um, void ore miner. That's why I have so, so much extra of the uranium now. And I put one accuracy modifier and three speed modifiers in it. Now, I, I don't know for sure whether that's the correct amount, but I found an old post, again, something about a year old, and the guy had done some testing back then on the highest tier one. So I, I, I forget how many there were, 12, 16 or something modifiers. Um, and he found that he would, did best with one accuracy and the rest speed. So I just said, okay, I'll pick one accuracy and the rest speed. The disadvantage with speed is it dramatically increases the power. Each speed roughly, not exactly, roughly is like putting down another one of these units, um, adding that much power on again. So, uh, and the accuracy doesn't do that, but do still improves uh, what you get. So, but when it, if you can double your output, um, and with three of them we're uh, basically tri tripling our output, then you're going to get a lot more of it than a minor increase in accuracy, like three or four percent or whatever it is. I don't remember what it is, so don't correct me. But you get more. I got more uranium this setup. Uh, than I was getting from here by far, not by a little bit, by far. So it was a worthwhile investment. Mind you, there was another option. We'll go over that in a sec. But for power, I set up one of these. Um, that was at uh, Ben's I run suggestion. He asked me if I was going to go solar, and my first thought after having dealt with solar and other packs and going, nah, they're way too expensive for uh, the power they put out. But then I looked at the amount of power. This thing puts out 4,000 RF per tick. Crafting was no worse than building uh, that thing. And it could power like four of them. And I'm going, well, okay. Let's give it a try. And I was really impressed. These things are worthwhile. There were alternatives. Oh, actually... Just before I leave over here, and I'm going to forget. I set up a sag mill the way I did those. And so, oh, it's full of lapis. Ah. Let's get some upgrades. One, two, three, four. I never had that much lapis before. Okay, so what happens, I'll put four upgrades in these things. I always leave the last one blank. Or I'll put a uh, void upgrade in there. But this gives me the option if I want to keep storing more of it, if I get a lot of something good, uh, then I can put an emerald upgrade or something in here, pull these out and replace it with all emeralds or something if I wish. But I got to leave one open to put a higher tier one in, or I can't pull these out once it's full. Anyways, so this thing is processing a whole pile of different things. 
Um, diamonds, what I really wanted it for. I had run out of diamonds and I need more of them. But it's also good at doing my Certus, my Redstone, my Lapis, Coal. Coal ha out of that thing has a small chance, like 2% of diamonds. It doubles the diamonds coming out of the diamond ore. That's better than my uh, fortune pick does, etc. And the flint is being fed automatically in there. Okay. So that was my next... I'm gonna, probably going to have to move the sand and put something else up in there that needs to go into the sag mill as well. There's a lot of stuff building up over there. Um, what was I going to talk about? Oh, yeah. So, there was a couple of interesting ideas when I considered upgrading all of this to auto-produce the, uh, like, I've got this so it's auto-empowering uh, them, but what all I do is I take, like, a stack of these, one, two, three, four of these. Stick them in here. It does its thing and sends them back to this chest when it's done. Which is semi-manual for now. Um, and I was going to set up all the timing for that. But then I needed to get this automated. And I'd asked people in the comments for ideas on how to do it. And two people came up with great ideas. The key was, every time you fire off the reconstructor, it costs you a thousand RF. And doing it for every single one, one at a time, is just a ridiculous waste of power. So I didn't want to do it that way. I wanted to do like a stack or two stacks at a time, and I didn't know how to do that. So Virix suggested using a tiny chest that hold, that can basically hold one stack, put it on a hopper, break it with an auto breaker, place it back with a, the empty chest back with an auto placer, and pipe to fill it back in and repeat and keep doing that over and over. And that's actually not a bad idea. You're doing a stack at a time that way. There was an idea I liked at least as much or more. Efficiency 6 came up with the idea of using iron pressure plates. And you can set them, they give off a signal. If there's 43 or more items, it'll give off a signal of 2. If it's 86 or more, it'll give off a signal of 3, etc. So you could set it up so that as it gets a signal of 3, it tells the um, reconstructor to, uh, to change it at that point in time. And that would be very good. Um, but once I tried out the uh, um, solar power, I'm not nearly as excited about the canola anymore. And even if I didn't have the solar power, somebody else in the comments came up with an even better idea than the canola, which I could have used before, even when I couldn't make the tier two solar. Um, what he did was he made a blaze farm and an enderman farm. So if you do it with the reef, Reserb uh, spawners, they draw no power. And then he takes the, uh, takes those, makes ender eye, oh, sorry, ender eyes, feeds them into an ender generator with about 20 upgrades in it. And he gets over 1000 RF per generator. And he can run quite a few ender generators off of uh, those spawners. I think he had seven or something running off of them. So that's a fair bit as well. That would have been bet way better than this uh, canola processing idea I had here. And so long as you can make the uh, uh, spawners, everything else is pretty easy. 
Okay, um, what else do I want to cover off? One last thing. Oh, I did double up these when I did the 10 as well. I now have Imperial and Industrious. So I have access to Royal Jelly and... It's not up here, it's all over in here. Pol pollen Clusters and Royal Jelly. So I reached that goal. Now to get those, it wasn't just 10 combines. I did like 30 combines before I was able to get up to Industrious and Imperial for each, 30 each to do them. That's why none of it last episode or a couple of episodes, I just kept doing this and doing this and doing this till I got it, right? So my question is, at this point for people that are further in the pack, What's my next goal for bees? Uh, what am I working towards? What am I going to need deeper into the pack? Um, I think I'm going to need to start breeding by monastics. But mona I can't do monastics yet. Sorry, those are mod not monastic, modest. Um, I forget what I needed them for, but uh, they built up to something else. But for modest, they need hot climate, and they're tolerant one. So it goes normal, warm, hot. Well, we're in normal. If it was both two, I, or um, heat two, I would be fine. Or I, I guess cold too. Yeah, need, need to be cold too. Then I would be fine for it. But uh, oh, I didn't need arid. But that's one down. That's fine there. So I can't uh, process them in this environment. So I have to build the. Uh, well, not have to. I have two options. I can either make an aviary, or I can make the greenhouse from uh, forestry. And you can set the climate inside it. But to make the greenhouse, you have to make uh, greenhouse glass. Where greenhouse glass, need a bunch of dyes to do it. Need biomass. What's bio? Oh, uh, anyways, need a bunch of stuff. A lot of processing to do it. So I'll probably do that in a future episode once I figure out how to do it. But I need to know which bees I should be moving on to from here. But that's pretty much covers it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something new. Go out there and have some fun. Thanks.